Section 24 of Astounding Stories 11, November 1930. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reader's Corner, Part 1. From a Science Fiction Fiend. Dear Editor, I agree with you about the reprinting of old stories, because you would only force older science fiction readers to read the same stuff that they have read before. Any science fiction fiend like myself will surely have the reprinted story in his collection of magazines. The size of your magazine is perfect, but your paper is not very good. As for me, I don't care about your paper because your stories are so very good that the paper doesn't matter. My favorite story, and one of the best stories that I have ever read so far, is Murder Madness. It has a very original idea and holds your interest from the very start. I am also for a more often publication of your magazine. About twice a month. Rupert Jones, New York, New York. Valuable Suggestions Dear Editor, The July issue of Astounding Stories is one of the best issues you have so far published. Arthur J. Burks sure is a master at writing science fiction tales. The first installment of Earth the Marauder was swell. Harl Vincent is another very good author. His novelette, The Terror of Air Level Six, was a close second. The Forgotten Planet by S. P. Wright, Beyond the Heaviside Layer by S. P. Meek, and From an Amber Block by Tom Curry were all good stories. The cover illustration was the best yet. I hope that the next dozen covers do not have blue backgrounds. Other colors you might have are green, red, pink, orange, yellow, black, and light and dark purple. When will Edmund Hamilton's first story be published in Astounding Stories? Have you received any stories by Stanton Coblentz, A. Hyatt Verrill, Ed Earl Rep, John W. Campbell, Jr., Edward E. Chapelow, and Edgar Rice Burroughs yet? Why not have a page devoted to the authors? You could print a picture and tell something about one author each month. I think that an illustration representing science fiction would look good on the contents page. I hope that Wesso will soon be illustrating every story in Astounding Stories, or that you will obtain another artist equally as good, if possible. Is it possible for you to use a better and thinner grade of paper? I save all my Astounding Stories, and I like them to be thin so they will not take up so much room. Jack Darrow, 4225 North Spalding Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Not yet. Dear Editor, I have just received your July issue of Astounding Stories, and I must say that it is the best yet. The only thing wrong with it, in my opinion, is that it is too small. The size should be at least 9 by 12. Also, it should be a semi-monthly, or at least accompanied by a quarterly and annual. The stories in the July issue are wonderful, all except Murray Leinster's serial, which does not belong in your magazine. If you have any intention of putting an annual or a quarterly on the market, will you be so kind as to communicate with me as I am very much interested in your magazine? Louis Wensler, 1933 Woodbine Street, Brooklyn, New York. Ever since. Dear Editor, I want to tell you what I think of your new magazine. I think it's great. I stopped in a drug store and saw Astounding Stories on the newsstand. I bought it and have been buying it ever since. I am fourteen years old, but I am interested in science. Why not get a story by Edgar Rice Burroughs and some more by Ray Cummings? I wish success to your wonderful magazine. William McCalvey, 1244 Beach Street, St. Paul, Minnesota. Not one poor story yet. Dear Editor, I agree with you that reprints should absolutely be kept out of your magazine. I admit that there are many stories of unusual merit among the reprints, but I favor new and fresher stories. In your last issue, June, I consider The Moon Master as being the best story, closely followed by Out of the Dreadful Depths. The Cavern World came next, followed by Giants of the Ray, Brigands of the Moon, and Murder Madness. I have not found one poor story in your magazine yet, and never expect to. I, for one, favor a larger-sized magazine with a five-cent increase in price, or, at least, if the magazine must remain small, I would like to see a quarterly out on the third Thursday every three months. I am extremely pleased to see that an interplanetary story by R. F. Starzl will appear in your next issue. Please have more of his stories, if possible. Forrest James Ackerman, 530 Staples Avenue, 
San Francisco, California. Likes Present Size Dear Editor, Best Stories in the Last Two Issues, C.D. Willard's Out of the Dreadful Depths, Excellent, Charles W. Diffin's The Moon Master, Very Good, Sewell P. Wright's Forgotten Planet, Fairly Good. I am a new reader, but interested in these kinds of stories. I am pleased to see that your readers criticize freely. A story that will please one reader will not interest another, perhaps, and it may not be the fault of the author's ability so much as that he doesn't like that type of story. Out of the Dreadful Depths, by C. Willard, is the best story I've read for some time. I could not see a single way it could be improved. The Moon Master, by Charles Diffin, was just as good, but I didn't like the ending so well. I certainly hope Mr. Diffin will write more stories like it, especially using his same three leading characters. The Forgotten Planet by Mr. Wright was well written and pretty good in spite of the fact that I don't like that type of story so well. Murder Madness by Murray Leinster was well written and the characters interesting and real, but I didn't like his subject. I hope for more and different stories from him. Earth the Marauder by Arthur J. Burks looks as though it was going to be a record winner for me, accomplish the impossible, and make a good story from a story of the future. I don't like horror stories, crazy stories, and stories written far into the future as brigands of the moon. These stories make light of the vast distances of space and are too weird, droll, and fail to give a single shiver down my old backbone. They are strange and inhabited by strange people. No story can give the faintest idea of the space between those mighty suns of the universe. Most of them have more imagination than scientific knowledge. Earth, the marauder, is an exception. I would much rather hear stories of primeval days of the lost Atlantis before Earth was populated with scientific beings, when the caveman looked up at the unknown, then so near to him, at the moon, which was then so close and uninhabited by superior beings, tales of superstition and all mystery stories of the unknown. I like interplanetary stories, if not written too far into the future. I like the present size and shape of your magazine. Best wishes for the success of your magazine. An interested reader, Goffstown, New Hampshire. Likes. Dear Editor, I have just finished reading the July issue of Astounding Stories, and I think every story is simply great, especially The Terror of Air Level 6. That sure is a story. The Forgotten Planet is a corker, too. While reading the letters in the reader's corner, I noticed that almost everyone has a hankering for Edgar Rice Burroughs' stories. Believe it or not, I'm wild about his stories myself, and I'm looking forward to reading his stories in Astounding Stories. It won't make any difference if they'll be originals or reprints, so long as they're Burroughs. Ray Cummings is another one of my favorites, and I always read his stories first. His Brigands of the Moon hit me in the right spot. The Moon Master in the June issue was also a very fine story. Now about this argument about reprinted stories. I think that if at least one reprinted story appeared in each issue of Astounding Stories, it wouldn't hurt its reputation. Here are some reprints that hit the ceiling. The War in the Air by Wells. Taranto the Conqueror by Cummings. The Conquest of Mars by Service. I'm sure the readers would enjoy reading them, but if you are persistent about avoiding reprints, then we'll have to do without them. Paul Nikolaev, 4325 South Sealy Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Wants Sequel. Dear Editor, I have read every issue of Astounding Stories, though I can barely afford it. I like it very much. The best novels were in order 1. The Moon Master 2. Phantoms of Reality 3. Spawn of the Stars 4. Terror of Air Level 6 In the July issue you published a story, Earth the Marauder, which promises to be even better than the Skylark of Space that once came out in another magazine. I like Harl Vincent, Ray Cummings, Arthur Burks, and Martian stories best. Interplanetary stories always agree with me. Burroughs is an excellent author. I like his Martian books. The Beetle Horde, in the first two issues, was very good. But why not give a sequel about the other and more terrible creatures in the Earth whom the madman spoke of? Fourth Dimensionals are sometimes good. You should have reprints by Burroughs, Cummings, and Merritt. I am eagerly waiting for the next issue. Do not enlarge the magazine because I cannot afford it. 
Don't publish stories like From an Amber Block. They're rotten. Publish more future and interplanetary stories. Joseph Edelman, 721 to Kalb Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. Stans Pat. Dear Editor, I have read all the issues of A.S. since the date of publication, and I think that there is no other magazine like it on the market. I would like to offer a few suggestions contrary to most of your readers, in other words, Jack Darrow and Charles Barrett. 1. Keep magazine in present size and price. 2. Issue it only once a month. If it was issued semi-monthly, the writers would soon run out of ideas, and the readers would get sick of it if they read it so often anyway. 3. Keep up the style of stories now running. In other words, keep the science a little in the background. Do not let it monopolize the story. I get other magazines that do not follow the last-mentioned rule, and the result is the stories are full of machines going 10,000 miles per hour, etc., pink, black, purple, and 11 other colored rays. As a result, the stories are drier than the Sahara Desert. The illustrations are fine, okay, as they are. Walter O'Brien, 6 Hagman Place, North Bergen, New Jersey. Trial by Readers Dear Editor, When Astounding Stories first appeared on the newsstands, a brand new science fiction magazine, I was prejudiced against it as a competitor to the existing magazines, one that might carry an inferior quality of science fiction so closely approaching the supernatural as to practically disregard science. In a few cases, as with very good writers like A. Merritt and H. P. Lovecraft, this is permissible, but otherwise not at all so. In the first issue, the stolen mind seemed to bear me out, but then there was Tanks. I bought the next issue, much better, and then the third showed the Soul Master very well written, but not quite science, as related. Yet Cold Light held me on, and Brigands of the Moon. There was no danger of my dropping off now. In the current issue, Murder Madness and The Power and the Glory stand out as mileposts in the history of science fiction. The rest are not far behind, though, as a matter of fact, Beyond the Heaviside Lair and Earth the Marauder have more discernible flaws than the rest. Just for example, a layer of organic matter would raise cane with astronomy due to refraction. Air is bad enough, but the writing overwhelms the error. You have certainly assembled a group of excellent authors, new and old, and I am glad to see the promise of R. F. Starzl in the next issue. His Madness of the Dust is one of the most naturally written interplanetary stories I have read. Logical and clear, just as it would happen to anybody. And now for the big question, that of reprints. You seem to have already decided the answer, and have defended your action well. But I wonder if it is well enough. By far your best argument is your last, authors must eat, with which I have no quarrel at all. Still, one classic serial a year or at most two might not prove too harmful. Following back, I reach a statement concerning the Saturday Evening Post. In the past it has published hundreds of the world's best stories, and never reprinted. True, but why? Because these stories were all available in book form, in libraries and bookstores, in original or new editions, or in the Grosset and Dunlap list of perpetually printed best sellers. It is possible to read them for years after publication, but try to find the past masterpieces of science fiction. With the exception of Burroughs' books, most were never printed in book form. Even books by Wells and Verne, classics of their kind, are gone, totally gone, even from the shelves of libraries. Many of Verne's best stories were never translated from the French, and the other classics of which readers write, classics familiar to most of us only by name and a few lucky tastes of others, newer works by the same authors, are absolutely gone annihilated. Their best works are beyond the reach of the reader. Only by republication, in magazine or book, can they be revived in an age when they will be remembered and preserved. An Age Awake to Science and Science Fiction Other magazines are doing it, one or two to the year, and it may be that you need not reprint. But the reservoir of the past is large, and a few cannot drain it. This leads to your first argument, that better stories are being written today. They are better than the average of the past, but not better than the classics. It would be folly to say that because the short story is a modern development, 
and because Galsworthy or Walpole or Reimark are better than the average of yesterday, to our present tastes, that the classics of the past should be scrapped. The analogy I feel is good. The classics of general literature have their place in history. The classics of science fiction should have theirs. There are dozens better than the general run of present work by A. Merritt, Homer Eon Flint, George Allen England, Austin Hall, John Tain, Garrett P. Service, Ralph Milne Farley, Ray Cummings, and others that stood out in an age when science fiction was considered pure fantasy or imaginative trash. In the present age, they would be still better, and this time they would not be lost to the world, for there are publishers and readers who would preserve them. You may adhere to your decision, but to my mind, and I think to far more than one percent of other minds, reprints of classics are essential, actually vitally necessary. Try to find out what a ballot would show, again from the author's point of view. Up to now, Burroughs has had all the breaks as to book publication. Now Ray Cummings and others are being published. An author must eat, give him a chance by reviving his best efforts and bringing them to public attention so that a publisher will find them worthy of publication. Most of the masters of science fiction are alive. Give them a chance to eat. Two, a great many of the best modern authors are modern readers. Ask them if they would be willing to see one of the best stories of the past reissued each year, stories unpublished in existing magazines for ten years or more. I certainly hope you will alter your decision. And now to reverse some other decisions of readers. The size is quite all right and very handy for binding purposes. Mr. Mack to the contrary. Incidentally, the staples are so placed as to make binding simple. Also contrary to Mr. Darrow, I prefer the artist Gould to Wesso for interior illustrations, though Wesso is best for mechanical illustrations. Incidentally, Give us the name of the artist for each story, especially when the illustrations are unsigned, as in the April issue. Wessel's best cover for you has been that for April, illustrating Monsters of Moyen. It shows his best style very well. As to my favorite type of science fiction, any kind, if well written, will do. As it happens, the king of authors, A. Merritt, has a type all his own, as Mr. Bryant notes, which is unbeatable and my favorite. However, at times a good writer may fall down in his fundamental assumptions. I don't care where or how far he goes, so long as he starts with something that present-day science does not deny. Here is where the Soul Master fell down, and even more so, the Soul Snatcher. Better leave souls and astrals and egos alone, except in very, very rare cases, when an author turns up who can make you believe in them as mechanical entities. As a science fiction fan, a student of chemistry, and a hopeful author, I will probably write to the reader's corner as often as I want to blow off steam regarding science fiction or the way in which you are running the magazine. I hope I won't be considered an utter nuisance, and will be given a trial by jury, a jury of readers. P. Schuyler Miller, 302 South 10 Brock Street, Scotia, New York. End of Part 1